Greetings and welcome to the Elephant TV. My name is Joe Kubuthi. Today I'll be in conversation with Ms. Hadrik Kumal. Uh, Ms. Kumal is the Honorary Consul of Estonia here in Kenya and she has been in Kenya for the last 27 years. Uh, welcome Kadri to the Elephant. Thank you, it's a, such a pleasure to be here. One of the interesting things about Estonia is, is, is the idea around uh, this thing called a digital e-card, an electronic e-card, where it's really the fulcrum of your, your digital revolution, where citizens, through citizens, can access their government services, they can pay their bills, they can uh, access their health records, uh, they can pay their traffic tickets, etc. I mean, it's really a one-stop shop to many of your things. Uh, a few years ago, uh, the government of Kenya embarked on a similar project uh, to, to embark on what, 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 what we now call Huduma Number. Uh, in, 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 in your view, uh, do you think uh, uh, do you think the Huduma Number could have worked in Kenya uh, just based on our realities, our peculiarities, and uh, benchmarking on what has happened in Estonia? Yes, so Joe, you, you, you're actually uh, right, pointing out that yes, we have had a complex history. Um, we have had a complex history uh, partly because we, for, because of our geographic location. And so we do have Russia to our east. We do have Scandinavia to our north and west. And we have uh, the, the rest of uh, Europe uh, to our south. And, um, and so because of that location, over the hundreds of years of our history, we have always been that country that everybody wants to have as part of theirs. And so we've, we've had, Estonia has had its struggles for its independence from the time it really knows itself. And, um, and so this, this is where uh, our, our identity really is, is, is very central to us. And, uh, and this is where uh, when we regained our independence in 1991, we, we were clearly on a path to right some of the wrongs. And um, in, in very many ways, uh, many of the Western countries at that point in time looked down on us because you know, it's, it's that poor neighbor who, you know, clearly does not have anything. And so let's just, you know, try and, uh, you know, give them some hand-me-downs and, you know, let's try and help them out because clearly they, they, they are struggling. Uh, but Estonia stated the fact that before we were occupied by the Soviet Union uh, in the end of Second World War, Estonian economy was stronger than Finnish economy, for example, at that time. And so it was not so much that, well, that's, that's the poor neighbor. It is simply we, our growth had been stagnated by the Soviet Union, but now we were free and we were not going to be beggars to our neighbors. And so our leaders at that point in time made several strategic decisions. And one of them was that even if uh, our, like for example, one of the examples is of um, the Estonian uh, telephony system. In 1991, the telephone exchange in, uh, in our capital Tallinn was uh, from the uh, 50s. Uh, Finland offered to give us their telephone exchange from the 70s. And Estonia said no. We're not taking on your legacy. We are taking whatever is the latest. And, and so that kind of strategy is one of the things that straight away set us on a path of we will not uh, be held back by our past, but we will create our future and we will create our future now looking ahead, not looking back. And so in, in many ways, the rest of the Europe still to date is held back by their legacy equipments, their legacy systems, because they cannot consider it as um, a, 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 a sunken cost that is not going to take them forward. So Estonia, uh, when it uh, got its independence straight away, set out to create new, create a fresh, and um, we 
Uh, so the, the uh, 1996, we, our parliament adopted uh, the Estonian Digital Society uh, blueprint. Uh, 1998, we had uh, provided connectivity to all schools, something that currently Kenyan government is trying to do. Uh, by, uh, by the year uh, 2000, our schools had undertaken something that we call a tiger leap. Uh, basically, we, we, we consider ourselves leaping ahead of everyone else. And, um, and in many ways, where Estonia was at the start of its independence, 1991, uh, 1992, 1995, uh, throughout there, the uh, basic um, salary, the common salary for Estonian at that point in time was 50 euros. That's just about 5,500 shillings per month. That was the level of income for most Estonians at that point in time. And in order to build what we wanted, uh, Estonia straight away realized that we are not going to go, one, we are not going to become a heavy industrial country. That is out of question. Uh, we also realized that we will never be a 40 million population. We are a population of 1.3 million, at that time 1.6 million. And so Estonia straight away realized that the only way for us to do our tiger leap is through technology. And so when currently uh, many of the countries are speaking of the fourth industrial revolution, Estonia started that in the 90s, where we saw ourselves as a knowledge economy and building on our um, high level of education, high level of technology savviness. That is what actually took us where um, some of the things that you are now citing where we are today, where indeed Estonia is um, uh, globally known as the country with uh, the highest function in e-governance, uh, the country with um, the highest number of unicorns per capita. Uh, the, these are startups that have higher than $1 billion investments into them. Estonia has 13 unicorns uh, for a population of 1.3 million. Among them is Bolt. And so when many uh, people talk and say, so give, give us an understanding of, you know, how, how is it that Estonia is a knowledge economy? Uh, just, just to give you that example of Bolt. Bolt employs 600,000 people currently. Estonian population is 1.3 million. Bolt could never be what it is <laughs> if it was only employing people within Estonia. And that is how Estonia is not limited by its population, it's not limited by its borders, it's only uh, offering to others also our experience of how do we grow on the backbone of knowledge and uh, as a digital society. Uh Kadri, in, in Kenya, I mean, I'm sure you know this since you've been here for a long time, uh, we, have, we have the M-Pesa uh, M financial system. And it has been a large, by and large, a success here in our society, you know, uh, uh, for, for people, we, we send money back home to our relatives, our mothers, our aunties, our fathers. It is when you have a, a, what we call a harambe, you know, a, a gathering, we send home. And... The part of the reason why Mpesa has been a success here is because uh, we had a particular set of social conditions, but sort of condition that has enabled Mpesa to thrive. Uh, just, just to piggyback on the success of Estonia vis-a-vis uh, -vis Mpesa, what, what social conditions uh, in, other than Estonia that has made this digital revolution uh, in your society a success? So, again, this is another example where in some ways, Estonia is very much similar to Kenya, right. where uh, for a landmass of about 45,000 square kilometers, we are 1.3 million people. You realize that there are many people who are, uh, you know, not centered in towns. And the cost of providing services to every Estonian where it is sparsely populated is a very high cost to the government. And so instead of uh, going into the need to set up physical premises to deliver government services, 
Estonia chose technology. Uh, also, Estonia does not have a very favorable weather. About half the year, it's very, very cold. And so when, when we think of the way in Kenya, very often flooding affects people. Uh, there are people who are just nomadic in nature. Um, where uh, For them to get access to services, it's not so much about them being able to go to physical places of convenience. And so um, Estonia, uh, one, uh, chose that the government services need to be accessible to people without them having to go to physical structures uh, because that's convenience, the same as M-Pesa. You don't need to go to a banking hall in order for you to have access to your money. You have it right there in your phone. Uh, same way, ease of access to government services is part of what drove the, the Estonian digitalization because if I don't need to step out of my house to place my children in a school to get my uh, social um, security payment for children, etc. It's, it's so much easier. Ah, thanks for that. Uh, just to now to really bring this conversation home, uh, Kenya, Kenya, we go to the polls as a society in, I think, 65 days from now. And, you know, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of conversations the last three elections around uh, digital, having digital elections and, you know, digital elections will, will become, will make our processes much more resilient, robust. Of course, research is showing that that's not true because uh, one can't digitize integrity, isn't it? But, 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 but for Estonia, you had ele your elections, digital elections since 2005, uh, what makes your elections uh, have that credibility, uh, legitimacy, for the for for your own people. Okay, so I, I I'm actually happy you mentioned the word digital elections because uh, digital is anything that is not paper. Yes. And we, uh, you know we, we remember when uh, there was the entire conversation in Kenya. You know, moving from analog to digital. Yes. Okay, <laughs> and so digital is anything. Mm. However, Estonia has not been holding digital elections. Just to be clear, mm -hmm. because there is. One which is digital elections, and Kenya has done some of the, uh, even when you consider the transmission of votes right. digitally, that's digital elections, right? Okay, so, uh, and it hasn't worked. So there are other countries that hold electronic vote elections, mm -hmm. okay? So electronically in the sense that there are the machines that you go to where you carry out your voting electronically. Right. But that's not what Estonia does. Estonia holds internet-based voting. Mm -hmm. So internet-based voting means that there is no gadget that you need. Internet-based voting means that any uh, computer, smartphone, tablet, laptop, any of them are your voting booth. Mm. And uh, because um, in, in Estonia, so w one of the very early pieces that needs to be done in order for any e-government systems to work is you need to have a unique identifier for your population. And so uh, Estonia uh, built up its um, uh, accurate uh, population database and started to issue out digital identities in the year 2001. And so when you have digital identities where you're able to identify digitally, because that's, that's the entire premise of uh, a digital economy, digital government, digital um, society, is that every human being whom you see in physical world, whom you can identify with fingerprints, facially, by their signature, by their ID card, by their passport, you need to be identified that same person with similar securities digitally. You need to be able to convert the physical person into a list of numbers, because that's what digital is. And so without the digital identity, without a secure digital identity, and being able to use that digital identity in 
the variety of digital environments, you can't. Uh, one of the success stories of Estonia's digital revolution is, is has been centered around this idea of having a, a digital e-card, you know, a digital e-card which is really at the center of your your digital revolution, how you have one card and with this one card you can access your health records, you can pay your taxes, uh, you, you can transact you can transact in business transactions, uh, you can pay your bills. Uh, if, if you may, uh, Kadri, if you just explain to us how, how does this card work and how is it that has been made to be the center of this digital revolution? This is my uh, ID card and um, it it carries my unique identifier on it uh, we uh, and um, it it has uh, the chip that allows me to uh, use it as um, a digital secure login into government systems uh, basically anywhere where i would normally need to go and identify myself physically showing them my id card or giving them my passport in Estonia, this is what I use. And um, I, I, one of the things is that, okay, well, this, one would say, is an old way of accessing um, services because this was uh, first introduced 2001. We did not have smartphones in 2001, if you remember a time before smartphones. And so this is why at that point in time, uh, it was mostly desktop computers, not even. Uh, many people had laptops at that time. And so this is why a, a card that uses a, a terminal. And so like this is an Estonian issue uh, a laptop where it has actually a slot here where I put in my ID card. Now, in Kenya, I think, people who have access to laptops, desktops, is between 5 to 10%. Yes. And so when we refer back to the success of um, M-Pesa, M-Pesa is specific to mobile first countries. Precisely. And so this is where Estonia already introduced something that is uh, called Mobile ID from the year 2005. And Mobile ID is not a phone app. It is actually the same security certificates that are embedded on this chip that are embedded on the SIM card. And where the mobile phone is able to connect to the uh, certification authority that is able to verify signatures, able to verify identities. Kenya already actually had um, the digital signature law passed um, two years ago, but without the um, tools to uh, use uh, for digital signature, it's not possible to actually do anything with that law. And so in Kenya, the Huduma number, yes, is necessary, um, but the actual use for being able to use it either for uh, accessing e-citizen portal, being able to give legally binding signatures in courts, being able to um, apply for precision for your child in schools, basically anywhere where you would need to physically go, it would need to be the mobile ID, not the card. Because uh, uh, when, when you think of um, the card, yes, it normally is necessary. Uh, you know, the, uh, the need for a human being to be registered with the government, that dates all the way back to uh, the, the time when, like in Kenya, it was the British uh, occupation that said every adult male above this certain age must carry always with them. Uh, <laughs> because that's how they prove who they are and they can be where they say they are. But currently, if you can tell any officer who asks your identity, you can tell them your Huduma number, they can verify in the system, yes, visually, you are you, you can put your fingerprints. Currently, there is actually no need to carry plastic cards because in essence, it's the same uh, registration book Thank you, Kadri, for joining here as the elephant.